Okay, so I formally wrote it up for you, the process. This is the process that you should remember. The first thing you need to do, of course, if we're going to be analyzing the second derivative, is find the first derivative. Just go right past that and go ahead and find the second derivative. You want to find where the second derivative is equal to 0 or where it is undefined. You're going to create a number line with those points. They are not called critical numbers anymore. In fact, the, how I'll start referring them to is possible inflection points. So I'm going to call them possible IPs. IP stands for inflection points, right? Step four is determine uh, or determine the intervals in step three. Step four is plug each one of those in, but it's really, really important. You plug it into the second derivative, not the first derivative, okay? And then step five is interpret your solution. Remember, f double prime of x positive means it's concave up. f double prime of x negative means it is concave down. So let's look at example one here. It says determine the open intervals for which the graph of f of x equals e to the negative x squared over two is concave up or concave down. Okay, so on this example, because it's concavity, because we are talking about concavity here, we know we must use here, let me do concavity, we must use the second derivative. We're looking at the second derivative here. It's going to be a nice chain rule problem, so let's see how we can do this. We start off with, let me go back to my black color, sorry. Start off with f of x equals e to the, uh, I'll write it as negative one half x squared, just to help me out there, okay? So what does that tell me? That tells me that f prime of x, the derivative, well, it's an exponential function, so you simply copy and paste e to the negative one half x squared. But then you need to remember to multiply it times the derivative of the top. So if I, or of the exponent. So I have to find, multiply it times the derivative of negative one half x squared. Well, the derivative of negative one half x squared would be negative one half times two x, which would simplify to be negative x. So my derivative, my first derivative, would be negative x e to the negative one half x squared. Okay, great. Now I need to find the second derivative. I need to find the second derivative. So that was step one. Here's step two. I need to find the second derivative now. Well, to find the second derivative, I have a product here, so I need the product rule. The first function is negative x. The second function is e to the negative one-half x squared. So let's use the product rule. The product rule is the first, which would be negative x, times the derivative of the second, the derivative of e to the negative one-half x squared is e to the negative one-half x squared times negative x. If you remember, we already did that on the previous step. Plus the second, which would be e to the negative one-half x squared times the derivative of the first. Well, the derivative of negative x is simply negative one. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I'm ending up with negative x times negative x is going to be x squared e to the negative one-half x squared. And then I'm going to have minus e to the negative one-half x squared. So what does that really look like? Well, can't I factor out the e to the negative one-half x squared? And what would I be left with? I'd be left with x squared minus 1. Okay. How can I think of that? Well, if I want to think about this, this has a negative exponent, doesn't it? And if it has a negative exponent, can I throw it into the denominator? So wouldn't this be x squared minus 1 all over e to the 1 half x squared? And this is my second derivative. Okay, so I found the second derivative, but what do I need to do with that second derivative? I need to find the parts where that second derivative is equal to 0. Or where the second derivative is undefined. Well, it's a fraction. When is a fraction equal to zero? A fraction is equal to zero when the numerator equals zero, which would be x squared minus one equal to zero. Add one to both sides, I'd have x squared equals one. Square root both sides, remember you have to remember plus or minus any time you square root a square. So I'd actually have two values here, negative one and one. Again, these are not critical values now, but they are important numbers for us to look at. When is a second derivative undefined? So when is a fraction undefined? And a fraction is undefined when its denominator equals zero. Well, if there's one thing that you remember about e to the anything, e raised to the anything never equals zero. 
so it's never undefined. Okay, if you, if you remember the graph of e to the x, it is an increasing function above the y-axis. It does not have any x-intercepts. It is never equal to zero, so there's never a point where this function equals zero. So what do we have? Let's go on to step three. Step three is gonna be create that number line and determine the intervals, right? So let's do that number line. We have the values of negative one and one that we have to break it up at. We have our first interval, which would be negative infinity to negative one. Our second interval, which would be negative one to one. And our last interval, which would be one to infinity. We know that the, and remember, we are plugging this into the second derivative now. At negative one, the second derivative is zero, and at one, the second derivative is zero. So we have to go on to step four, which would be test a point in each one of these intervals. Now the huge thing here to remember is what do we plug it into? We are trying to determine the sign of the second derivative. So we wanna plug this into f double prime of x, and that's into x squared minus one all over e to the one half x squared. I need a number between negative infinity and negative one, how about negative 10? A number between negative one and one, how about zero? And any number between one and infinity, how about 10? So let's think about these. If I have negative 10, I'm plugging it into the second derivative, right? So if I have negative 10 quantity squared minus one, that is a clearly positive number. And look at this denominator. No matter what I plug in for the denominator, that 1 half x squared, this is always a positive number. e to a positive number is always positive. So that denominator, no matter what it is, no matter what number I plug in, is always going to be positive. Okay, so let's try plugging in 0. 0 squared minus 1 is negative. Let's try plugging in 10. 10 squared minus 1 is positive. So positive over a positive is positive. Negative over a positive is negative and a positive over a positive is positive. So that first interval, negative infinity to negative one, looks like my second derivative, because at negative 10 it was positive, has to be positive that entire time. My second interval, negative one to one, my test point was zero, because my test point was negative, that entire interval must be negative. My third interval is one to infinity, I chose the test point of 10. 10 was positive, so every number on that interval must be positive. So what does that tell me? Well again, anytime my second derivative is positive, my function has to be concave up. And this is my original function. My second derivative was negative, means it has to be concave down. My second derivative was positive, means it has to be concave up. So now we're able to do step five and answer the question using the analysis that we just did. Look at the intervals where it was concave up. Well, it was concave up on the intervals negative infinity to negative one, and it was also concave up on the interval one to infinity. So my intervals would be negative infinity to negative one and one to infinity. Where was it concave down? Well, that's where the second derivative was negative. That was on the interval negative one to one. And there would be my answer for the question, where is it concave up? And where is it concave down? Okay, again, what must I absolutely see for you to get credit on this test? The first thing that I must see is that you found the second derivative, that you found where the second derivative is equal to zero and undefined. You have your number line, you've chosen test points in each one of those intervals, and you've determined the value, the positive or negative, the sign of the second derivative of those negative of those intervals. So I have to see those test points. I have to see that it's positive or negative. If you skip any part of this step, you haven't proven to me or proven to the reader that it must be concave up or concave down. So not only is it saying determined, you are also proving that it must be concave up or down on those intervals. So you absolutely need your test points. You need to plug them into the second derivative to determine the sign.